Hello world, it's me, the little gremlin procrastinator that lives inside of your computer. So about four months ago I started on this project that is a ball gown inspired by the character Jinx from Netflix's Arcane. If you haven't watched it, I 10 out of 10 recommend you do. It is visually stunning and also heart-wrenching. I did actually get started on the skirt and then finals week hit and then I got a job! So I packed up my stuff. I moved to New York City for three months of my life. Yeah. And I just finished moving back and unpacking all of this and all my projects. Needless to say, this dress is overdue and so we're gonna see what past me left to work with and get started. I'm starting off by taking fabric dye and paint and drawing big old stripes onto this poly satin, then taking a hot pen and some foil and making these little hexagonal shapes all up and down the stripes as well. And it looks something like that. I'm gonna be honest, I forgot to film all of this. After more paint and foil, I stuffed this project into a box and moved halfway across the country. Several months later. Once I got back from my summer in New York, I saw what the skirt was left and I finished up hemming it. And then after I finished all the hemming, I was really happy with how the purple was coming out. I was much less happy with how the gray skirt was coming out. So to make it a little bigger, I added blue panels. That is not blue, that is brown. And gathered the skirt into a new waistband to give it a little more fullness. And I think that that really helped. Now with the underskirt and skirt done, it was time to move on to the bodice. I already had this corset pattern that I was really happy with, so I decided to just go what I already had and make it a little easier on me in the long run. This is what they look like roughly. They are not rocket science. So I went ahead and cut those out of my brown lining fabric and my purple main fabric. After putting together the lining, I also went through and added some ribbons into it to act as boning casings for pieces of thin and thick zip tie boning to give it a little bit of structure. Then I went ahead and traced the lining onto my outer fabric. That way the boning channels wouldn't show through the front and it would be smooth covered. Then I flipped that bad boy inside out, gave it a quick run under the iron and it's time to talk about some grommets. So I have the top. The problem is I have no way for it to close and I wanted to use grommets, but I don't want them visible from the outside. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in through the hole at the bottom and I'm going to put grommets through the just the brown layer. I'm going to have to add another just strip of fabric inside of here so it's reinforced, but I'll put grommets just in the brown layer. And then what I wanted, I wanted the lacing to show through, so I'm going to use this chain for lacing. And so it'll be like that, where it just has this little bit of chain showing through. I was worried because I thought the chain I bought was going to be too big for my grommets, but I found out that it just fits on there. With my grommet dilemma solved, it was time to start wrapping that chain through. The original length of chain that I cut didn't end up being long enough, and I have to fix this later. But that little button that I had tied to the end was so even if I unlace this all the way, I won't lose the chain. After giving it a quick try on, I decided that it was time to start draping some straps for the shoulders. I just did this by taking my lining fabric and drawing directly onto my mannequin, and then cutting four copies of the straps in my lining and my outer fabrics, sewing those together, turning those bad boys inside out, and giving them a press under the iron. After attaching them to the bodice, I gave it a quick try on, which was successful, and got started on hemming the bodice. Okay, so I have the bodice built, and uh, it just needs to be attached to the skirt, and I'll do that by hand, just so I can attach uh, at every layer. And while I'm digging the way it looks, the middle part that's very empty is, you know, a bit of a problem since I don't just want everything hanging out. So I'm going to take leftover fabric from when I made the underskirt and I am going to put together a shirt. I'm not going to give too many instructions on this. Um, it's loosely following the method that Bernadette Banner uses in her pirate shirt videos. She has two of them. Um, and they're really helpful. Yeah, I was serious when I told you I wasn't showing you how to make this shirt. There are tutorials all over online and I genuinely forgot to film the entire process. I will, however, be tucking this back under my armpits and sewing it into the bodice to where there's a triangle opening on the front of it. 
just like so, and pinning it in place. So a couple things today. So we're gonna change this side to match this one. And then I just pinned all along some connection points along the bodice. And so I'm going to go through and hand sew the gray piece to the purple piece so that it doesn't um, shift when I'm moving about with it later. And I will see you in a little bit because I am very, very busy today. It is also laundry day and I don't have a dryer, so all my clothes are hanging up around the house. I did then sit and hand sew for a very long time while binging Netflix, and then I tried it on and I was very happy with how this was coming out. Except when I tried to fit the dress over the mannequin. Here you can see me losing hope and deciding to make the chain longer because I was so excited to have it all put together and I failed. But all was not lost because once I added just about, I think, 24 inches more of chain, it went right over my mannequin's shoulders. I also added a little clasp at the neck just to hold everything together, and I also added some brown binding around it. And then I used some paper to make a stomacher pattern and also some sleeve patterns, a rectangle, and then this curvy shape that goes around the forearm. I really don't understand how I successfully made that work, but I did somehow. Then I cut it out of both my lining and my outer fabrics, and for the stomacher, I added a couple extra layers of fabric just for reinforcement. Then I flipped all those bad boys inside out so they had nice clean edges, gave them a press under the iron, and started on the straps. Taking a thin strip of purple fabric and a thick strip of brown fabric, I made it into a tube, flipped it inside out, gave it an iron, and it turned out something like that. I made about five each of these for the shoulders and elbows of the sleeves, and then pinned and sewed them into place to create these. Sewed those flat tubes into some sleeves and pulled them over the gray sleeves attached to the bodice and started to pin them in place to attach to the shoulder straps of the bodice that I already had in place. I've been having kind of a rough day. Uh, I just don't feel great. Um, I don't know if I'm getting sick or not, but um, filming is just a lot of effort. So I got the sleeves attached um, as they should be and um, I'm gonna, to fit them on my arms, I had to leave the cuffs open, so I'm just going to add a quick little snap down here to close them up, and that's how I'm solving that problem. The center uh, panel, stomacher, that's the word. The stomacher, I like the way that looks. I like the way the collar looks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the collar, and I have a little bit of extra of that ribbon. I'm going to put the same exact thing. I'm going to put mini collars in, on the cuffs. I'm going to make some rough cuffs. And then... The stomacher, um, before I can get to the fun decorating part of everything, I want to take some brown binding and I want to bind the top of the stomacher and the edges of this to just bring a little bit more of the brown into it. Um, and then I can hopefully move on to other things before the weekend is over. But I'll be back soon. I added a faux pull chain on the other side to match the one that pulls the lacing and realized I forgot to show you how I made the collar, so here are some brief, unexplanatory, and unhelpful clips. I technically have a finished dress, but I bought, one sec, I bought like a bunch of like chains and little gears and I have like all these brass buttons and things and so I'm just gonna bedazzle the heck out of this. Um, and then we'll call it quits. First layer of sparkle has been added. I added this chain that's gonna have a watch pendant and then there's some more chains down the sides. Down the middle I added more around the neck, uh, down the sleeves. And then there's also some that reach all the way around the back. I'm gonna go ahead and tack all this down with some hand stitching and then I will move on to my buttons, wherever those meant went. Strand of teeny tiny beads and it is now all over my floor. Once all those chains and beads were hand sewn on, I went ahead and took my hot glue gun and geared the heck out of it, and then started on my props. For instance, this little holster made from an old purse and a bunch of the extra gears that I attached to the skirt with some buttons like so. And I decided I wanted some props to go with this costume, so I went ahead and made some drawings of a couple of Jinx's main props, and then just got to work with paper, hot glue, and a dream. And really, that is all the instructions I can give here. I did not measure any of this. Caffeine does truly do wonders to the human brain. So then I went ahead and painted all these props black and then added some purple details in between the black. And then I went in with a shimmery bronze paint that I had lying around and also a shimmery silver paint uh, for some of the gray and silver details within them. 
And my hands looked ridiculous by the end of this. I felt like the Tin Man. I then went ahead and glued down some sheets of gold leaf onto paper and peeled those off a little too soon because they're speckly and covered in glue. And I went ahead and drew some of the little mechanical death butterflies that Jinx makes because what doesn't say joy like death butterflies? Okay, for this next part, I did not film it because I was very scared. It was my first time styling a wig and I love the way it came out. It's held together by hairspray and a dream and I will most likely feel more comfortable filming my next wig. But I'm very happy with how the butterflies look. You're about to become extremely inexplicably attracted to me. This is... This is hot. When most people cosplay Jinx, they usually go for the cartoony, arcane makeup look. I am not that talented of a makeup artist, so instead I just went for some sleepy, baggy eyes, some nude-ish lips, and some dark eyeliner to really bring out the crazy manic girl in me. And now the reveal. Well, that about wraps it up. I'm Art by LGO. You can find me on Instagram, TikTok, Patreon, Venmo, probably a bunch of others I'm forgetting. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Have a lovely day. See you next time. Bye.